Welcome back to another enlightening episode of the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, we have a special guest who is revolutionizing the conversation around perimenopause and menopause. This amazing woman is Andrea Donsky, a renowned nutritionist who is dedicated to empowering women through their menopause journey. Andrea hosts the popular podcast, Menopause Reimagined, and frequently appears on television as a menopause expert across North America. Her latest venture, Morphous, is all about helping women reimagine menopause as a journey of empowerment, providing support through nutrition, lifestyle advice, research, and science-backed supplements. Today, Andrea will share her passion and expertise on all things peri and menopause. Get ready for an insightful conversation that will leave you feeling informed and empowered. Let's give a warm welcome to Andrea. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Andrea. <laughs> Isn't it so nice to hear your bio? It, yeah, you know, as you're reading, I'm like, oh, wow, cool. Yeah, no, it is so nice. Thank you for that. And I appreciate the warm welcome. Amazing, Andrea. We need more Andreas in the world, you know? Such a like Gen X name, right? Like, you know, it is, but it's nice. <laughs> I mean, look at Wendy. Wendy, Wendy. That's like, so, but you know, my name wasn't created until Peter Pan. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's Isn't cool. that interesting? Trivia. I like it. So unique. So unique. Uh, so welcome. I was Thank telling you. you before we hit record that it's been a while since I've had any menopause experts on the show. And I, I was miss I was missing menopause for once. <laughs> well, it is a really fun, hot, no pun intended topic. But and a bunch. <laughs> it is. You know what? And I'm so happy we're talking about it because yeah. for so long we didn't. Right. And now it's like, it's okay to talk about it. And we're screaming it from the rooftops. As I say, as Gen Xers, like we're not going into menopause lightly. So we need to create uh -huh. more awareness really remove that stigma, which is starting, which is great. So I'm happy that we're having the discussion. Yeah. And you're a trailblazer in this whole menopause arena because you've been doing it for what, 10 years, 20 years. So I've been in the health and wellness space for 25 years. It'll be 25 years next year. So a really, really long time. And I started delving into the menopause space probably about six or seven years ago when I started having symptoms and I knew nothing about it, which was so amazing to me. And, and this is what I'm hoping for the next generation is that, and it's, and because we're talking about it, they won't like, I have two girls and I have a boy and they know everything there is to know about menopause. <laughs> like we don't, you know, no holds barred. Like we literally talk about everything in our house. So what's so nice is when I went into menopause and me and so many of us of our generation and my mom's generation and her mom, mm -hmm. the, her mom's generation, like we didn't talk openly about it. So I was literally, when I, when I started having symptoms, I had no idea what was going on. I'm like, yeah. what? Hot flashes? Am I in menopause? Like, isn't that like for old people? Like I did not understand what was happening to me. And I was hard on myself because I came from the health and wellness space. And I always, you know, I was so proud of myself. I'm like, I know so much about my body and I understand what's going on. And that's my, that's my jam. That's what I do. I knew nothing, nothing. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, we're, I'm completely changing my focus. I changed my career and I was like, I'm just going to study menopause. And that's what I've been doing for the last six or seven years. I can totally relate to that. Cause I also shared with you, I own some integrative medicine practices and I knew quite a bit, you know, I wasn't a physician or anything like that. And then here it was, I was going through perimenopause and knew nothing about it. And honestly, okay. I'll admit it wasn't until I started the show and the show's only been around for a couple of years that I'd never heard of perimenopause before. I'd only heard I, of menopause. I, I was yes, like, same, exactly. Someone came on the show, I think it was Jen Sweeney or somebody like, and I was like, perimenopause, what the hell is this? And then once I was reading all of the information about it, I was like, oh, so that's what I was going through. I thought it was like going nuts or something. <laughs> I might've been, well, but- that well, that's, I, yeah, I always say, like I have um, on social media, people are like, women are like, I thought I was going crazy until I found you until I find, you know, finally understand what's happening to my body. And that's what so many women feel is that we're alone, that what's happening to us, it must only be me, you know? So I think that's where it's a very common sentiment and no, you yes. were not going crazy. It perimenopause is a thing. And I didn't know about it either until I really started delving deep into this. And I, I, I had my first hot flash at 47, but I started now looking back and writing a book. I know you are too, which I'm excited to read your book and 
looking back, I now realize that I started perimenopause at 36, 30, somewhere around like my mid thirties. And I started with something called phantom smells and phantom yeah. smells are when you smell things that other people don't. And so I will talk about my yeah. research to what we do. Yeah. You so tell. like a lot of time. So, so phantom smells. So really what was happening is I was sitting in my office and I was smelling smoke. I was smelling burnt toast. I was smelling gasoline. And I was like, does anyone, is anyone smoking? Like what's going on here? And people were like, no, I don't smell it. And I was like, whoa, I went to the doctor several times, had several tests. And they're like, we don't know what's going on with you. Like I went to an ENT. They're like, we don't know what's going on. And nobody ever said, oh, this could be a perimenopause or menopause symptom until I started digging into the research and saying, Oh my gosh, that's what I, I was probably in Perry, my mid thirties, which it can, it can start anytime after the age of 35. So I had, I was in perimenopause now that now that I know for 14 years, nine of which I had no idea. That is crazy. Actually, no, I think it's like 11 years. I had no idea. Something like it was something like it was a long time that I had no idea that I was in perimenopause. Yeah. And I looked on your website and there's this one section, what symptoms are you experiencing? And I was amazed at how many symptoms are on here and crazy stuff, like just things like what you mentioned or clumsiness or double vision or frozen shoulder, hot feet, um, itchy burning ears. tongue, burning There's scalp. There's a phantom, yes, phantom smells, TMJ, burping, burp. Uh, yeah, gas and bloating. Yep. Digestive lose, issues. Yes. Like so many things where I've mm -hmm. even till today, till I looked on your website before we started. And I was like, I always thought it was just like your typical 10 or so symptoms. And I mean, there's the basics, right? The hot flashes, the uh, achy joints. What else is there? Night sweats, um, mood, swings. mood swings, like those, Anxiety. the common ones. Yeah. So there's common and then there's the less common, like other ones are like impending doom, uh, BO is a big one, social anxiety, tinnitus, electric shocks. Like these are symptoms that not, you know, we don't necessarily associate with being in perimenopause or menopause. So what's interesting, mm -hmm. you're like, well, I didn't even realize that there's so many yeah. is either did I. And years ago I was at a party and I was talking to a friend of mine. It was, she was an old friend and she was telling me, asked what she was doing. She's like, oh, I'm, you know, creating an app for women in menopause. And I'm like, an mm. app? Like, don't you actually have to have a lot of symptoms? Like she was saying for symptoms. And I'm like, don't you need to have like a lot of symptoms? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like 35 to 40 symptoms that are recognized. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a lot. I didn't even realize that. So I went home and I started a Google doc and I'm like, okay, I'm going to start tracking these symptoms. And this is what led me down the path to really become um, a researcher for menopause symptomatology, because I soon I quickly learned that there was way more than 35 to 40. There's only 35 to 40 recognized. There are now, according to our research, we just have, we have a signs and symptoms survey. We have about 10 on our website and I'm mm -hmm. passionate. I know we talked about this before we went live. I'm really passionate about research. And we now know that there's 103 plus symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. There is way more than 35 to 40. And there, like you said, there's so many that are well recognized, but then others that just, we don't necessarily make that connection. And think about how many women, myself included, would go to doctors for all sorts of these, you know, symptoms and, you know, maybe getting prescribed something or there's nothing wrong with you or, okay, you just need to exercise more or this or that. And then you're just like, it's, it's so confusing about how to even take care of your body. So we, so yes. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling for those of you who are watching this on YouTube or you see the video, I'm smiling because yes, because, um, not to mention the amount of time wasted, the amount of anxiety yeah. that we have for all the doctors that we're going to everyone's saying there's the nothing money. wrong with you, the money spent yeah, personally, but also I'm like government wise, right? Like for those mm -hmm. of us, like I come from Canada and a lot of, you know, so different, you know, medical systems. So, and in the U S as well. So it's like, it's very disheartening the amount of doctors that we need to go to and before the connection is made. So we created a survey called doctor's visits. I would mm. encourage all of your listeners to please go and fill out all of our surveys. They take literally under a minute to fill out. Nice. And we know, according to our research, that only 25% of women go to their doctor once until that connection is made. 75% mm. of women are seeing their doctor between two and five plus times before they make the connection between how they're feeling and it being a symptom of perimenopause and menopause. 75% wow. 
five percent of women and about 17 percent of those women are five plus times i have women who have told me and, and, and you know it's the most engaged survey that we have one of the most engaged surveys we have to date we have right now i think it's like 1100 responses mm -hmm. and over 650 women have left comments about their experiences so i have heard crazy stories from women that have like are still they've been to 10 doctors over a course of like five years and they still don't have the answers they're looking for so it's a very very serious issue and and a problem and i keep saying within the next three to five years i hope that we flip that that statistic 180 yeah. degrees. that's that's my goal and which is why i'm on such a mission to help educate women doctors healthcare workers partners of women mm -hmm. The next generation. I mean, everybody, we need to make this a, a conversation that everybody partakes in, you know? Yeah. Wow. So you started doing all the research, discovering the problems, the symptoms. When did you discover the solutions? Mm -hmm. uh, so great question. Um, so I started doing the research took me, uh, I would say, you know, I started doing the research when I was 47. So I'm 54 now. So I started doing the research around 47 when I got my first hot flash. And that's when I kind of made the connection after having suffered with so many with a plethora of symptoms before that. And then once I realized that I was in perimenopause or you know, perimenopause going into menopause, I started searching for the solution. So I started when I started searching for those solutions, it was actually for myself first, because I had really, really, really bad hot flashes, like to the mm. point, to the point where I couldn't function. Yeah. I had, I had a lot of symptoms, but hot flashes were the most debilitating in the sense that I, you know, would have one every minute and for like 30 seconds each. Like I literally looked at my husband one day and I said, if I can't figure out the solution, I don't know how I'm going to continue living because this is insane. Like <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out something. And, and back then, now people are talking hormones more back then it wasn't people weren't talking about it as much so i never considered it even as a solution even if i wanted to i always yeah. say like if you want to do hormones that's a decision you want to make i didn't even realize i could do like it just wasn't what it is today and looking back at the you know the studies that were done back into in the study that was done back in 2002 anyhow so i started searching for solutions for me because i just if for my for my quality of life and for being a mom to three kids, like I just couldn't continue that way. It just wasn't, it wasn't feasible. And as an entrepreneur, so I started looking for supplement solutions. So I already knew lifestyle and I already knew nutrition because I'm a nutritionist and I, you know, when it comes to food, that was my jam. That's what I literally have been doing for, you know, at that point it was like 17 years and I had the lifestyle. I mean, of course, it's not so easy to always manage your stress levels and, you know, the exercise thing. So, but I try my best, you know, doing that because all of that makes a really big difference. Sleep was really important, but my sleep was disrupted because that's another massive symptom. So I started looking down the supplement route and I started finding things that were helping me. And I found a solution that helped with my hot flashes and I was able to get my quality of life back. So I would say that kind of that big answer um with that i started looking for solutions really around the time that i started having those crazy hot flashes so it came it took about two years to find the solution that got rid of them um or then really minimized them and then once i found that i started looking for solutions for so many other things so that was the same for me hot flashes was like oh my god it was awful and it would just come out of the blue. I'm just like, why oh. am I? And then people are like, why is she sweating? She must be nervous. I'm like, I'm actually not nervous. I don't know. <laughs> but then I would become nervous and I would get anxiety because I was having the hot flash. And I did the same thing. I was like trying to find supplements and, and then going to all these different doctors and even some of, oh, we'll just get a hysterectomy or a mm. partial hysterectomy. And my mom did that. Like you were saying earlier, a lot of these women didn't have the solutions that we have now. And a lot of them, the doctors like, well, just let's just rip everything out. You know, it's like, we are saving uteruses today. <laughs> like, right? well, it, you know, and it, yeah. we have so many more solutions now. Yes. I mean, there was the option of HRT, but then again, we had that study. We didn't have all the new information that we have yeah. today. And yes, a hysterectomy was another option, like for women who have like really bad bleeding, ablations, like the, like there's so many different options, but today there are so many more options that women yeah. can make decisions for, you know, doing the research themselves, speaking to their, <clears throat> excuse me, to their healthcare providers who actually understand menopause, all of that. Like we're in a great place and it's only going to get better. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of supplements, like I shared with you before. Mm, so oh what are some of the, like the basic supplements that can help? 
So I always, so the way I look at supplements is I'm very particular. So I do love supplements mm -hmm. as well and always have. And, you know, it's been something that I've researched for many years. And when I started, when I started Morphous, I wanted to make sure that, and it took me a really long time to decide what ingredients I wanted to use in our supplements, because there are so many things out there that you could choose, but not everything is great for women in perimenopause and menopause. And I'm very particular about that. So mm -hmm. any supplement that I have as part of the Morph Morphous lineup is number one, they're all backed with, by research. And mm -hmm. I know I use them myself, which is a big thing too. And it's things, it's ingredients that I would recommend to people that I love, mm -hmm. but also we don't have any fillers. We don't have like, sorry, we have, we don't have any, well, fillers that I would never put in my body. For example, mm -hmm. like I would never put titanium dioxide into it, like our additives, right? Like, you know, um, I'm trying to think food coloring is another thing we would mm, never yeah. have in it. Seed oils is something we would never have in our supplements. So nothing that I would never put in my body. Right. Right. So for me, that's a big thing. Uh, additives is a big thing. And when I started finding things that worked, I'm like, okay, so we want to make sure that we have these ingredients that will help women with their symptoms. So I always say that there's like these foundation supplements that women in perimenopause and menopause should consider mm -hmm. because we are depleted in certain things. So for example, magnesium, like to me, yes. that's actual foundation. Like to me, all women in perimenopause and menopause should be taking a magnesium. Mm -hmm. My favorite is magnesium bisglycinate. I kind of think of it as the hero with the wearing the red cape of magnesiums. There's a lot of different types of magnesiums you could take. The nice thing about bisglycinate is that it can help mm -hmm. with so many different symptoms that, um, you know, that you don't have to, it's not for one specific thing. It can help with so many different things. And most of us are depleted in it. So magnesium is great. I love fish oil. So for me, mm, omega threes yeah. are, are amazing for your hair, skin, nails, your heart, your brain, like a whole bunch of different things I love, but you need a good quality one. The other mm -hmm. thing that our omega three is great with, cause we have the triglyceride form, which is important. It's also very highly absorbable. It's for dry skin. So if you have dry wow. skin, dry eyes, dry mouth, like anything like that, dry mouth, it actually is terrific at helping to hydrate. So if you, if you, and there are a lot of women, like I had something called my bony and gland dysfunction in my eyes, dry eyes. If I yes. don't take my fish oil, I will get it. If I take it, my eyes are like perfect. Interesting. I don't have that dryness. Yeah. Dry skin, all of that. Like it's, it's, and again, it's like, this is where I was like diving into the research, but also using it personally. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is fiber. Most of us are not getting the mm -hmm. amount of fiber that we need that 25 to 35 grams of fiber. So we have our fiber us, which is great. And it's, so to me, those are like our foundation supplements, which are part of our starter pack that you can get that women in this phase of life could really benefit from, in my opinion. And then we have other I, ones that aren't so like generalized, but more like if you have a specific symptom or if you're having trouble sleep again, that magnesium is great. We have our sleep us. So we have lots of different options to choose from. Yeah. And then on your website, do, do you help with like trying to decide, okay, what supplements to buy? Yeah. So we have, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have like your know, symptom, like you click on your symptom and these are the products that we recommend that you have. The okay. nice thing about our supplements and why I kind of, I like to pride ourselves on is our customer service. So you have access to me, you have access to our team. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, just email us or message us and we will help you. So we want to make sure that you're getting what you need. I don't want you to take a thousand things. I want you to take yeah. what you need and only what you need. <laughs> like, so and, that's my philosophy too. Less is more. And then how do you know when to stop taking those supplements? Well, I think it depends on what those supplements are, right? So mm -hmm. there's certain ones okay. you may want to take a break on certain ones that you don't have to like a, a fiber. Like if it, to me, if it's working, then Keep continue it. taking it. And it, but it depends what it is, right? And it's always a good idea, like for anything to take a break, give your body a break of anything, right? So maybe mm -hmm. a one day a week, give your body a break, or after a couple of weeks, give your body a yeah. break or, or a day or two. Like, so always listening to your, so my, my big thing is listening to your body. If it feels mm -hmm. right, great. If it doesn't, don't do it. Yeah. I like it. And what about um, food and lifestyle changes? Anything else that can help along with the supplements? Absolutely. Nutrition is number one. So you can't yeah. out supplement good nutrition. So you always want good nutrition. So as one of the things I say a lot is we, you know, things that worked for us before may not work for us after we get into perimenopause and menopause. Yeah. So having that glass of wine before bed might've helped you before now, well, it might trigger sleep issues, uh, night sweats. Mm -hmm. Maybe your brain will become a little foggy after. So listen to your body and change things up. Don't be afraid to change things up. Yes. So I would say, Focus on whole foods, really important. Focus on protein, focus on good quality fats like avocado, olive, coconut oil, everything in moderation, of course. I would say looking at 
um, you know, getting your vegetables, your fiber, of course, your fruits and veggies, you want that 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. Very, very important. If you can't mm -hmm. get it, no worries. Most of us can't try something like fiber us, right? It has six and a half grams of fiber per serving. So we get, it helps you, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it, there's ways to get there and we're busy. We all have busy mm -hmm. lives. So there are things that you can do to kind of, I kind of like hacking it, right? To help you get what you need. Um, looking at, you know, if you can handle legumes, more in moderation, your your complex carbohydrates, your, leg your legumes, your nuts and seeds, making sure you're hydrated. That's really important. Aim to drink half your weight in ounces. Mm -hmm. So that's a good kind of rule of thumb. Hydration plays a role in so many different factors, including the number one symptom that we're experiencing, which is fatigue. So mm -hmm. Making sure that you're hydrated can also help offset that. Again, if that's one of the reasons that you are fatigued, there's so many reasons for it, but yeah. that could be one of the reasons. So that's kind of like a good rule of thumb to make sure that you're getting enough of. And then obviously managing your stress is big. So stress yeah. can trigger so many menopausal symptoms and our nervous system. So when we go in, we have another survey, which is our anxiety and mood survey, stress and anxiety survey. And we know that 66% of women in perimenopause and menopause are more stressed now than they were before and uh -huh. were less able to cope with it. So this is something, yeah. So this is something that it's, it's, an, it's, it's known. And mm -hmm. so we need to work a little bit harder to help yeah. to relax, our, you know, to relax, to calm our nervous system, to cope with that stress. So just doing what works for you, walks in nature, setting boundaries is a really big one. Yeah. And I'm sure you talked about it on your podcast, right? Like yeah. how do we say oh, yeah. no to people? So I'm very big on empowering women to understand what's happening to their body as they get into this phase of life to really say, okay, this doesn't feel right. So I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to say no to this. It's not working for me. Whereas before, I mean, listen, I was a huge people pleaser. So I, I understand firsthand. Yeah. It's like how hard it is um, to do it, but it really does make a difference to set those boundaries and to it'll help you tremendously. Yeah. It helps you emotionally, mentally, and obviously physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really important. Why the name Morphous? I love the name though. Thank you. We made it up. Um, it's because <laughs> it's a combination of the word metamorphosis. So yep. change and us as a community, because I'm big on community because I was so alone. I, I literally felt yeah. like I was on an Island all by myself when I was going through this because I went through it a little bit earlier than my friends either that now I wonder like, if, did I go through it earlier or did people just not want to talk about it? Yeah. And I think it might be a combination of both, but I remember going through it and being like, I would wake up in the morning and within like, I don't know, an hour. So I'd become this like raging person. Um, I'm going to keep my language nice and clean, but you know, I became well, like no this fun. raging person. I know I, was, I literally became this like total bitch. And I would say to everyone around me, I'm like, is it just, like, you know, I wake up happy, but all of you are like pissing me off. Like I'd like my family, right? Like I would kind of joke around, but not joke around because I was so irritated. I was like angry all the time. I had no patience, but I would ask other people. I'm like, do you feel the same way? And they're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, okay, so it just must be me. Like there must be something wrong <laughs> with the, me. Right. I'm only, I'm the only biatch here. I'm the only <laughs> chair. So I'm like, all right, well, so that's why for me, community is so big. And that's why I have my TikTok yeah. page. That's why I have our community on social. Like for me, I could not be doing what I'm doing without our incredible community. So we yeah. really merged the word morph and us, morphous. I love the name. Yeah. And plus it's like, you feel like you're not alone in this, Huge. that you're not going crazy, that it's okay to have these symptoms. And, and I love the metamorphosis. Uh, I've always loved the, the whole, you know, the stages of the butterfly. Mm, and I was, I was no, just no, interviewing no, yes. someone yesterday and we were talking about how a butterfly struggles, you know, to get out of the cocoon and it actually has to struggle to get out of the cocoon. If you were to cut the top of a cocoon off and take the butterfly out, it would actually die. It would be deformed and it would die. So the struggle is there. Yes. I think like with perimenopause and menopause. Yes. You can't like the struggle actually like those symptoms, if you will, that's the sign to pay attention to it. And that doesn't mean you have to continue to struggle that eventually you'll bust through that cocoon and then you're free and you can fly. Right. So a thousand yeah. percent, which is why mm -hmm. I just wanted to have the butterfly analogy in our name yeah because it rep and it's our logo too it's our it's like I it literally know, represents it. everything that we do a little butterfly right there <laughs> everything that we do so yes and it's so true and like I said before there's so many options that we don't have to 
live with the struggle anymore. There's so many things that we can do that if you are suffering with any of the 103 plus symptoms, there are solutions. You do not have to struggle and you do not have to feel alone. Are you a uh, peri or minnow or a post? So great question. So I'm menno. So I'm in menopause. And actually what I'm, I'm really trying to do the word, do away with the word postmenopause because I feel yeah. like it does a big disservice to women. And I'm going to explain yeah. why. So in my research, one of the things that when I would speak to women and I would be like, oh, are you, you know, do you experience this? They're like, oh, I'm way past menopause. I'm postmenopause. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, actually, when you're in menopause, you're in menopause for the rest of your life. You're never yeah. past menopause. So mm. that's an important thing. Like kind of like when you go through puberty, you're in puberty for the rest of your life. And yeah. I feel like when women say that, it's it, they're kind of dismissing the fact that you have to adapt your life, your, your nutrition, your lifestyle yeah. changes, everything that you're doing, your supplement routine, if you choose to do that, you have to adapt it to being in menopause. So I really mm -hmm. feel like it does. So I feel like it's kind of like poo-pooed in a way. It's like, oh, I'm way past yeah. it. I don't have to think about that anymore. And I'll say that to my mom a lot. She's like, oh, I'm post-menopause. I don't have to think about, no, no, no. Uh -uh. You have to think about how you're eating, mom. You have to think about exactly. what you're eating. You have to think about all that. So I feel like, so just to kind of like, you know, I, I just feel like it should be perimenopause and menopause. So I'm in menopause. Yes. And I am too. Awesome. <laughs> and I love that you Welcome. said that though, because yeah. <laughs> We're butterflies. No butterflies. I like um, but no, I totally agree because I still, even for me, I still, I notice some changes in my body that I'm like, Ooh, maybe I need to eat a little bit of this, or maybe I need to, uh, do more yoga, do more meditation, do more relaxation techniques. Right. So I love that you said that because it's not like, Oh, you know, you get past menopause that one year and then you're like, Oh, I'm done. No, yeah. you still no, have to not. pay attention to your body and what it's telling you. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's a mm -hmm. ticket to not really worry, like to care or to do or to continue to really focus on it because now more than ever, yeah. we're more susceptible to things than we were before. So yeah. Just, really focusing on that nutrition lifestyle supplement is so key because, you know, women, you know, heart disease, osteoporosis, brain health, like all of these are yeah. major as we go, it becomes big issues for us as we go into, or as we're in menopause, right. And stay in menopause for the rest of our life. And for some women, it can be half their life, a third of their mm -hmm. life, right. We're living longer now, which is so beautiful. So it's something that we absolutely have to pay attention to. Plus too, if you think about it in midlife in general, a lot of people are going through changes like the birdies are leaving the nest. They could have some career changes. There's all sorts of stuff going on and the better, the healthier, that you feel, then you can go through those changes a lot easier. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Mentally, physically, emotionally, right? Yeah. Well, there's so many. And then you look at it in all of those different realms. So mm -hmm. yes, I 100% I agree. And you're living proof that you can get through it and not just get through it, not just survive, but thrive through it. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's just it, every day it's, you know, I, I really, and I work hard at it. Right. So, mm -hmm. and because this is what like my vocation, this is what I'm doing. I'm always reading in the research. I'm always in the research. I'm always listening to N of one, which is myself. I'm always speaking to friends, colleagues, mm -hmm. listening to our community, the women on social media, that is what gives me that passion to continue because if we could, you know, even helping one woman make a difference in their lives, to me, that's the most important thing. And the education, I just feel, and that's where my superpower is. Like my superpower is education. That's what I've been doing for 25 years. Yeah. So I just took what I was already doing and just brought it to the menopause space. So the education part is good. And also kind of laughing at myself. Like I, I do like on my TikTok, I laugh at myself a lot. Like I make fun of myself a lot, not in a self-deprecating manner, but yeah. more in a kind of like, I don't want to take myself too seriously because there's a lot of things that we can laugh about and joy. What happens yes. when we're joyful? Joy right. brings us so right. So we want to stay in that joyful place. So I try to educate, you know, I, when I, when I'm educating, I'm doing it on a little bit more of a serious note, but then I have like the you know, the silly videos that I do sometimes or making fun of my hot flashes. Like, Me so too. I like to have a good time doing it. Yeah, like, I like to have a good time doing it. And, and, and that's how we learn, right? When it's- And I think like that's fun. part of it too, just embracing it, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't all have to be so horrible. 
Yeah. And, and there are so many women that are suffering big time. So I yeah. get it. You know, yeah. I, listen, I was there for so many years, so I totally understand what our community is going through. And what I, you know, when a, I say, I also say, it's like when we're in the weeds, it is very hard to see the light, yes. like to see that, yeah, that we're, that we get through it. And I was in those weeds for so long, mm -hmm. but once you do get through it and, and I'm here and you could speak to this too, Wendy is once we do get through it. And I, I don't know, tell me a little bit about your, I'd like to know what your symptoms are. I know mm -hmm. you said you had paw flashes, but did you find like, once you got through it, you were kind of like, you had this new sense of clarity. Oh gosh. It was so great. So at the same time that now I know same time I was going through perimenopause, I was also suffering with Lyme disease and black mold toxicity. So that wow. was fun. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, and no, I was like, crazy. looking back, I kind of like, it was confusing because some of the symptoms are similar between those three. Overlap, right. Yeah. So, but I felt like the perimenopause or the others were exacerbating each other. You know, like it was almost like they were attacked, like, oh, no. Yeah, I get priority here. And then it was like here, all of that was going on inside my body. And I didn't know what, how, and it was awful, 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 mm -hmm. awful. I mean, I can't even like achy joints, uh, fatigue, rama and of course the hot flashes, the night sweats and my hair like started like breaking off. It was dry. My skin, like every, anything, probably all those symptoms off <laughs> And now that you mentioned what the, whatever that the phantom smells, I had like, I had some, like, where I was like, somebody smelling detergent, like some weird stuff. Yes. Detergent is one of them. Yes, we have a yes. list of like so many, like, yes, gas, mildew and BO are the top ones, but there's like, you know, sorry, yes, mild, I had mildew that. and BO are the top ones, but yeah, like the gasoline, like yeah. detergent, some women smell. And it was strong. Expensive. Like it would be so strong. Like, okay. Yeah. No, I'm so and then of course, with all of that, then anxiety, depression, sad, mm -hmm. all like dark yeah. cloud going over me. And yeah. then of course, doctors trying to put me on like, you know, antidepressants and all that. And I'm like, I like something's not right. Like I knew something was not right. And I had to, I mean, it took years to kind of like get through the whole thing. And thankfully, by the time I was getting to the end of it, I was starting to see more of those, you know, help for menopause. And I, I mean, I think I probably hit menopause. I'm 51 now, 44. Mm. Yeah. So the average Pretty age early. of menopause is 51 and a half in North America. Mm. It's earlier in some places and later in some places, but yeah. that's on the earlier side. So yeah. you must have felt a little bit alone because back then it wasn't as open, right? People didn't discuss no, it. Oh, uh -uh. yeah. And then that crazy, and that was only a few years ago. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago, but, yeah. and yeah. I don't know, it's just like having started this show, thank God, but you know, I'm learning more and more about it every single day. And it's like just scrolling on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. It's like, oh my gosh, now there's so much. Like it's whoa. so much. Yeah, yeah, so much. It's so nice. I love your approach though. It's very simple. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And it, and I feel too, like it's, um, I don't know, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but just more empowering and, and uh, hopeful. Hopeful is the word. Like, I wish, I wish I had found you years ago. I wish I had found me too when I was going through yeah. it, but, but now it, what's just so great is that there are so many more, there are so many more um, creators and experts who are speaking about it and from coming from different you know points of view. And, and I also try to really lead with kindness. You know, for me, that's a very, and compassion. And mm. I think that, that's like really important for me is yeah. that understanding what women are going through. Like I said, a lot of women are going through some really rough times. Mm -hmm. So if I can provide that support and validation for me, then I've done my job and the education. Yeah. of course. I know I have so much compassion too, for women, especially if like, if they're, they're going, you know, if they're at the peak of like their perimenopause symptoms or menopause, and then they get sort of a divorce papers or whatever. And then it's like, oh my God, then it's just, it's so overwhelming. And then you're trying to like, again, kind of going back to what I was saying before, trying to make all these changes in your life and you just feel like shit and that's tough. So then it's like, you can feel better. It makes it easier to go through oh, yeah. those, 
you know, tough changes in life. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. And, and having your support system. And if you have a partner being open and communicative with your partner, yes. your kids, with your friends, with your parents, if they're still around, like just talking about it and, and not, not feeling ashamed, getting rid of the shame. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big one too. Like I remember I had friends who told me that they were, especially women in, you know, this one in particular, she was a woman in the work in the workforce. She was a CEO and she was in meetings with mm -hmm. her board and she started like she one of the meetings she passed out in because I don't forget forget the reason why another one she had like crazy hot flashes and she said there was so much shame and nobody wow. would address it in the room and it would be like kind of like they're looking away right whereas now you know it could be like oh I'm having a hot flash you know like yeah, whatever like yeah. you know like let's let's verbalize it right because when we verbalize it's not like that you know elephant in the room it's like yeah let's talk it's like yeah right. that's what it is Hey guys, sorry, I'm having a hot flash or Hey, everyone in the room, I'm having a hot flash. Give me a second. You know, yeah. like then it does then it, everybody else around you is kind of more relaxed too, because they're like, what's going on? No, they don't know what's happening. They're like, what's going on? Why does she do like, like yeah. to your point, is she nervous? Like what's happening? Is she okay? <laughs> you know? So yeah, my friend she passed out on the boardroom floor, like oh my God. crazy story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. And I feel like it being recognized more that, that when that happens now, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going through menopause. Like, yep. I'm having a hot flash or yep. My, my joints are aching or yes, I'm a little tired today. Like it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, to, it's okay. To feel it's, that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, they, the statistics show that I think it's about I don't know, 13 to 15% of women don't have any symptoms. Oh. I challenge that. I challenge that statistic because yeah. I do believe, because now we know, and maybe that was based on the 35 to 40 recognized yeah. symptoms, but because there are so many that it's for those who don't have anything, that's amazing. But I do believe it's a much smaller percentage. So a lot of women are going through this, like you're not alone and mm -hmm. we have to stick together because like, that's how we're going to make this change is by talking about it and being open about it and removing that shame. That's, that's a big part of it. I was just thinking that, let's see, the average age um, for a woman in the United States, they live until they're 79.1 years. I just looked this up the other day. But then what is the average age that a woman normally goes through menopause, perimenopause? Right? So it can happen anytime after the age of 35, but most women will go through peri in their 40s and 50s. So, so yeah, that's like, so think about that, like between perimenopause and if you, you know, living till the average age, I plan to go t over a hundred, but 79.1 years, let's say 80 years. So that's more than 40 years yeah. of your life, perimenopause and menopause. And more research is needed too, which is nice in the U S I know that there's research now that's going to be allocated to uh, the NIH to do research on women's health. We need more research in this area. There isn't yes. a ton of research. There's a, there is research, but there isn't like compared to some other, you know, areas, there isn't even close to it. kind of just got like brushed off. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, have your babies and, now, and then, yeah. Oh yeah. That's going to happen. Mm -hmm, menopause, like whatever. Well, women's health, unfortunately, just does, hasn't had the attention that it deserves, especially when it comes to research. So that's changing now, which is great. There'll be more research that's going to be available. So the more the more that it just becomes a thing on a regular basis, yeah. then the more that we'll be able to help women and find solutions and more solutions for it. It's interesting how you and I both, how we, we become our own guinea pigs and then mm, we create what we needed, right? Yeah, that's why. I mean- because I was already in the health and wellness space for me, I was like, like I said before, I'm like, I need, I should know this. Like, how come I don't know this? Right. So it was part of like my mission to be like, okay, I'm going to find those answers yeah. because this is my space this is what I do. Um, but yeah, being your own advocate, I always say, you know, for me, I call it an N of one because we're always trying, you know, I always try things on myself. I'm always looking at myself now. Of course, end of one is a great way to go do things, but you also want to look at uh, other things as well, like the medical journals, like depending what you're trying to trying to do. But yes, you right. want to advocate for yourself. Look at helping yourself first. And then if it helps you, then share it with others. Like if you're actually finding relief by something you're doing, yes, share it, tell people because mm -hmm. now there's not only one solution that works for everybody, but right. if it's working for you, maybe they could try that, tweak it, right? So there's so many amazing uh, options to choose from today and do what works for you. Like yes, that exactly. You know, yeah. Every, every body is different. <laughs> 
everybody is different. What works for me may not work for you. But the other thing I will say, especially when it comes to supplements, and I want to be very clear about this, is that sometimes it takes supplements a little longer to work because it's not a drug. So being patient is important too, right? Like, you know, for certain things, you might take, you know, two months, three months to work because it needs to build up in your body as opposed to a medication that's going to work right away. So if you do go that supplement route, just know that I would say give everything like three months. And then if it's still not working for you, maybe you need to tweak the dosage. Maybe there's so many nuances when it comes to supplements, which is why it's become such a passion of mine. Forget, you know, not only on top of the fact that you want proper ingredients, you know, you don't want those extra additives if you can avoid them, but also the dosage, how much are you taking? Is that dosage backed by research? Is that the dosage that the research said? So if you're looking to take something to help a specific thing and there's a star ingredient, well, how much of that star ingredient is it is in there and is it going to work? So there are a lot of nuances around supplements that you really want to pay attention to. So if you have any questions or, you know, you or any of your listeners have uh, questions about it, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, that was a good point. Supplements uh, definitely take some time, not like a crazy amount of time, but you have to be patient because it's not like if you're taking something, something for hot flashes or night sweats and you take it before you go to bed and, you know, in the middle of the night, you have a night like, oh my God, it's not working. No, like you have to like, it's got to build up in your system. It's it's food, it right? It's like it's nutrients. And so it does take time. Yeah. Like, so we have, um, we talked a lot about hot flashes, but I'll, I'll, we'll provide a solution. So we have something called pycnogenol on our website, our amorphous pycnogenol, yes, which I is love awesome. Pycnogenol. Uh-huh. Love it. It helps with like 30 something symptoms, but also, um, I take it with dim with our amorphous dim and that helps we like my, it's awesome for hot flashes. So you could do something like that. Like depending what it is that's bugging you sleep, we've got amazing magnesium with our sleep us. I formulated sleep us. So it has like four incredible ingredients. That's the other thing, branded ingredients. We don't use fairy dust, which is like kind of just saying it's in there with a tiny amount. Like we use, Mm. we use the right, the efficacious dosages and that's the big thing, but yeah, give it time. But then if you've tried it for like say three, four months and it's not working, then ask the company, like whatever brand you're taking, speak to the company. If you can ask them, maybe there's a tweak, maybe there's something you can add in. Right. So there's, it's experimenting with your own N of one. It was nice to see that you had pycnogenol and I was like, is that how you say it? Pycnogenol. Um, but I started taking that. I mean, I'm not taking it now. I wish I had it, but it's been, God, it was probably like 10 years ago and I had a hard time finding it, but isn't it, and I could be wrong on this, but isn't it from, um, tree bark? bark? Yeah. Yes. Bark. Yeah. From yeah. Bark. And, and it helps with, or it helped me, I can say even like with melasma, which is another yes. symptom, symptom of yeah. perimenopause. Now that I know. I <laughs> yeah. <melasma>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it would yeah, kind of like come and go like it, but yeah. it's, but that definitely helped me a lot in magnesium fish oil, all that stuff you know, is so good. And that yeah. helped me tremendously. So yeah. Pycnogenol is also great for tinnitus if you have, which is another oh, symptom. Ringing if in you the have ears. Tinnitus, yeah. Ringing in the ears. It's excellent for tinnitus. So if you do have that, I recommend our amorphous uh, pycnogenol. It's great for that. What's interesting is I did have that also, but then that was also a symptom of, I think it was Lyme disease. I don't know which one it was. I was like, I don't know what is up, but, but then I finally decided I'm like, I've got to figure this out. Right. Like no matter how I go about it, like that eventually all of those symptoms would, would go away. And they did, which is nice. Oh, amazing. Well, I mean that you're a true inspiration. That's incredible. I mean, those are three very, not easy, not very easy things to deal with at once, especially black mold, especially Lyme and Barry met like, so I give you a lot of credit for actually, you know, doing what you did and yeah. And he can getting, Oh, it was nothing really. It was, (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure it's very, t- it's tough. No, especially from mold. Mold is no joke. And either is. Yeah. yeah. But you know what though, too, I think as we, we need to remind ourselves as women, we are very strong. Like we, we are, can, we can get through it. We can, it's, you'll get through it. it. It'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll feel even better. Actually. I mean, I, I remind myself too, of like I, as I look back, especially now that I'm writing my book and I have to like retell some of my stories as I look back, I'm like, damn, how did I get through that? But I did it, you know? So it's like, you'll get through the perimenopause. You'll get through the menopause. You're going to, you're, you'll be fine. You'll be great. Even better than fine. Oh my gosh. And once you get through it and you're on the other side and 
you're, yeah. you're still paying attention to your nutrition, your lifestyle, your yep. supplements, your, like all of that, that you, you can thrive. Like, and then that's yeah. the beautiful thing. I really love being in menopause. And I yeah. say, I love my fifties. I love, <laughs> I really feel like I have come into my own. I know what yeah. I'm really good at. I know what I'm not yeah. good at. I stay in my lane. I, yeah. you know, like, I've just like, I've kind of come to the point where I'm like, this is me. And I really like who I am, you know, and it took us, you know, it took me a long time to get here, but I'm here. And I think being an inspiration for others who women who are still in that kind of in those weeds, like I said, mm-hmm. when you do get through that other side, it is pretty awesome. Like it really it is. is. Oh, yeah. I know. I just, I, I can, I totally agree with you. Someone had asked me yesterday, what, what do I love about being me right now in my life? And I'm like, because I can actually be me. I, I am mm-hmm. Wendy. I am true Wendy. And it took me a while to figure all that out. Um, but yeah, it feels so good. And I feel good in my skin. And it's such, such an amazing feeling. So it was worth like trying to yeah. bust through that cocoon. Yes, it was. And you're gorgeous and you're smart Thank and you. you know, you, you, you own it and yeah. And it comes across and you know, in everything that you do. So own those hot flashes. And you're fun. <laughs> yeah. And if y'all could see my coffee mug now, <laughs> I love they it. Can, they can see it on YouTube. It says, fuck off. I'm writing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm writing a book to hopefully change the world. Just like you though. Right. To empower, yeah. empower women. To make a difference. If we can, you know, yeah. leave a legacy, it's let's make a difference and help women. And like I said, stronger together, because when we band together and help other women, it's just, it's incredible. Love it. Where can we find you? You can find me on my, well, my website is we are morphous, M O R P H U S.com. You can find me on TikTok. I do live on TikTok at Andrea Donsky. And you can find us on Instagram at we are morphous. We're pretty much on any social at we are morphous. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. And you yeah. Can like our- I was sharing with you before, your website you is amazing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Like you could hang out on that website just for days. We have There's of so much. Yeah. So much good information. And then your podcast too. I think I mentioned yes. it in the intro. Um, wait, menopause reimagined. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So we have menopause reimagined and it's awesome. My podcast where I speak to incredible people who who can help you navigate through perimenopause and menopause. So yeah. And you will come on my podcast. We'll talk about your book. (laughs) So yeah, no, it's great. I I do love it. So yeah, thank you. And thank you for having me on. This is. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea. I've learned, I learned even more today. I I thought I knew everything about menopause, but no, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. All right. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.